I think AI in the last two weeks has enabled something so groundbreaking that I'm still reeling with shock and I think perhaps excitement. Now, I don't want to hype anything. So when I say that, I mean it. And I touched on it before and to see it better now, we're going to go to ChatGPT. And if you're there and you have ChatGPT, you can go down and click on your name and follow me. I'm going to do this with you, okay? I clicked on MechLab's director and it says my GPTs. Now. I created the ideal customer simulation. And before I touch it with you for a moment, I want to suggest if you have been with our work for the last 30 years, you'll know that the goal of a testing program is not to get a conversion lift. It's to get a customer learning. The profound customer learnings that drive your product development will give you the value proposition that achieves high margins and the win. The key is to know your customer well enough to do that. We talk about something called the customer theory. We say in a testing program, you don't just want to lift, you want to learn and sort of build out a model of your customer's decision process. And then with that model, you'll have significant competitive advantage. This is the first time in 30 years I've been able to say that what I said regarding that is now outdated. Because I think the point now is not to create a customer theory, it's to create a AI-based agent customer that will enable you to dialogue with your prospective customer, gain deep, profound insights, and transform your outputs. So the page you see right now is GPT enabling these new agents. And you'll notice I have ideal customer simulation, like ideal customer profile. This is a simulation. Now, I want to share with you how I built it. So we're going to go back and forth. So watch what happens now. Using natural language, you can interact in this left side of the screen and just create your bot. Or you can configure it right here, just dropping some things in. Honestly, the creation is simple. It asks you plain, simple questions. You answer them and before you know it, you have a bot. So what can we all do right now that's more powerful? Watch. I'm going to go back to Teresa's page, 10 by 3. I'm going to show you that I did prep. See this? Do you see what's in red? What's in blue is the part we normally change with our prompts. What is in red, however, is the answers to the five questions about our customer. Now you say, well, how did you get those answers? Simple. I did this prompt and I pasted those questions. You all have access to this. I pasted these questions right here into the process and I got answers here in a table to the five questions of the ideal customer profile. I then said, well, make an image from that. And so it provided an image of this specialized type of consumer and all of that informed what I'm doing next. I took the answer in the reply, these questions and these answers, and I pasted them right here. Now, what that did was it enabled me to create this bot called Ideal Customer Simulation. On the left side is sort of programming the bot. On the right side is sort of the ideal customer. So now I can do some strange and interesting things. Now let's look and configure. I put a name. That's all I did. It did its own description. I pasted this information right here in the green box, right here in this space that says instructions. You can have conversation starters. You can rewrite them or you can use theirs. You can control the capabilities. This can browse the web. It can generate images and it can interpret complex code or math. Now I have a bot here. So let's try something. What would get you to pay? Let's say $300 for a pet bed. Remember, we're helping Teresa, who has a not-for-profit, and all of her artisans scattered around the world, thousands of them, can build custom products. Teresa's launching a new line. Now I'm talking to a customer. I am not simply talking to a normal GPT. As a customer deeply invested in sustainability and ethical production, my decision to pay $300 for a pet bed is not driven solely by the product itself, but by the values and impact it represents. And now it's listing for me the things to emphasize that would get me to be willing to pay $300 for this bed. How many of you right now are starting to see a firecracker going off in your head and you're starting to realize, oh my goodness. Now here's the point. It's giving me a good answer based on only one data set input, and that is the five questions and their answers. That's because they're very strategic. But what is to keep you from asking this next question, for instance? I don't know what it's going to say now. Where can I find more customers 
like you. Do you are you st- on here? And if I were to go into the instructions and add additional data points, then what you can start to do is truly interact. But this GPT you need to create it because it's customized to your version. So here's what happens. Watch me go over it and create one in about three minutes or less. Here we go. I'm going back over here. I'm going to click on MechLab's director, my name. I'm going to drop down where it says my GPTs. And I'm now going to click on the little plus sign to create a GPT. When I click on that, it wants to ask me what I want this GP to do. I want it to simulate my ideal customer. Now, it doesn't need much to take that and really start improving it. But without me going in to configure and putting this in, it's asking me these questions. And what it's going to do is configure it for me. Great choice to simulate your ID customer. We can design a GPT that behaves like a customer with specific interests, preferences, and behaviors. First, let's give it a name that reflects its role. How about the name ideal customer? I don't care right now. I'm just going to say yes. And you'll see you can always change that. Now what it's going to do is it's going to start to take my inputs and generate a profile picture, which I can reject or I can keep, okay? That picture, it's thinking, and that profile picture will now go along with my GPT. Now, why it's doing that, I'm going over to the Guild, I'm going over to Teresa's 10 by 3 page, where it says prep in green, I would copy that. You're going to take that over here in a moment. And I'll show you the GPT. See, it made me this icon and it will continue to ask me questions to make it smarter and better. But I can go to configure and I can now paste that. See right there, what I just copied can be pasted right here. And then you can go in and change the parts I had in red. So I would change it first. I would paste in what you have in the SSD. Now, if you're new, never fear, because right here is the Super Funnel Strategy Database. You already asked and answered questions about your customer. And you can take Kenneth, whatever you have in that space, like here is his information. I can copy that. I paste it into my GPT, into that red place right there, and boom. 